Joining us now is Joel Rubin. He's the executive director of the American Jewish Congress. You've seen that image. I'm sure you've seen it before. The swastika made up of syringes. It's just one of many images now that's being used by the anti-vaccine community to suggest somehow that this effort to vaccinate people is tantamount to what happened in Nazi Germany. Just broadly speaking, when you see images like that, what's your reaction? Well, John, uh, it makes my blood boil. Uh, this is not an anomaly. This is now part of a disturbing trend in our politics. We are seeing politicians normalize hate symbols, the use of hate language. They have supporters who are doing the same. And this uh, use of the most abhorrent, disgusting, vile symbol in human history, the Nazi swastika, uh, is not just beyond the pale, but it should be an embarrassment to all Americans who care about the future of our democracy. Why do you think it's happening? I mean, this isn't a one-off at this point. This is something that, that, that seems to be getting more pervasive among the anti parts of the anti-vaccine community. Yeah, John, you know, at the American Jewish Congress, we've been studying this in depth and issuing re reports, researching uh, what's happening online and social media and this confluence of hate symbols, hate language, uh, anti-Semitic tropes and extremism in a way uh, 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 as a, a use for mobilizing political power. And so we see politicians leveraging this hate to grow their base, to grow their voting potential, to grow their fundraising. Uh, we see politicians like Marjorie Taylor Greene raising money off of platforms like Gab that host symbols just like this that we have denounced repeatedly. Uh, we need politicians and leaders to stand up and speak out against it, not equivocate, not waffle, not wink and nod at their supporters, which is what's happening, which is why this continues to grow, and it's now a disturbing trend. Leveraging hate. People should think just about when that has happened in our world history before. Leveraging hate for their own political gains. I want to read you... Uh, the response from Herschel Walker's campaign, which did cancel this fundraiser that was going to be hosted by this person who posted that swastika image. The Walker campaign says, Herschel is a strong friend of Israel and the Jewish community and opposes hatred and bigotry in all forms. Despite the fact that the apparent intent behind the graphic was to condemn government vaccine mandates, the symbol used is very offensive and does not reflect the values of Herschel Walker or his campaign. Is that enough? No, that's mealy mouthed. That's giving a wink and a nod to those hate symbol uh, uh, users to continue their efforts. Uh, we're seeing hate symbols against Jews across the country at state level races in Virginia recently uh, with, with uh, imagery of gold coins next to a Jewish candidate. We're seeing it uh, with fundraisers where uh, neo-Nazi Holocaust deniers like Nick Fuentes are headlined by Paul Goser. So we need our leaders to speak up and speak out. Uh, if they don't do it, they are supporting this trend, and that can't happen in the United States. I was just in Germany last week uh, giving talks to Germans and with Germans about the rise of fascism and anti-Semitism and extremism. Uh, we need to speak out loudly and clearly. The Germans know this. They understand that this kind of hate festering leads to horrible outcomes for everybody, uh, certainly for the Jewish people, certainly uh, uh, for uh, what occurred in Europe in World War II. Uh, hate needs to be tamped down, and our politicians need to speak out clearly. That just wasn't enough. Joel Rubin, I appreciate you being with us this morning. Thanks, John.